A capacitor is a device that can be used to store electric charges and energy. A classic capacitor is a set of parallel conducting plates, which we discussed in the 17th static electricity lesson. When we connect a battery to a capacitor, the battery provides a voltage, V, acts like a pump and pumps positive charges out of its positive terminal and onto this plate and pumps the negative charges out of this negative terminal onto that plate. Of course, in reality, what the battery does is to pull electrons off of one plate and dump them onto the other plate. So when a capacitor carries a charge, it's always a positive Q on one plate and a negative Q on the other plate. Same amount, opposite charges because uh, all of the excessive electrons on this plate come from the other plate. When we draw capacitors in circuit diagrams, we would draw a pair of parallel plates like these. Note that these two lines have the same length, unlike a battery with one long line for the positive terminal and one short line for the negative terminal. A capacitor has capacitance. We use the capital C for capacitance. The definition for capacitance is C equals to Q over V. The charge of capacitor carries divided by the voltage difference between the two plates. The unit of capacitance is coulombs per volts. Coulombs per volts, and it gets a special name, capital F, Farad. It's named after Michael Faraday. The capital C's here can be confusing. When used as a symbol, it is capacitance. When used as a unit, it is coulombs. So please be careful not to mix them up. For this equation, we usually see it in this format, Q equals to C times V. For a parallel plate capacitor with plate area A and the plate separation D, the capacitance is C equals to epsilon naught A over D. By the way, the plate area being A means each plate has an area A, and we do not add these two areas together to get 2A. We just use A for the plate area. I'm not going to derive this equation here. The epsilon naught here is a constant that is related to the K 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton's meter squared per coulomb squared, which is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. So this epsilon naught is 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 coulomb squared per newton meter squared. And this is called the permittivity of free space. The capacitance of a capacitor only depends on the size and the shape of the capacitor. It does not depend on the voltage nor the charge. Even when a capacitor does not carry any charge, the capacitance is still the same. And when we connect the capacitor to a higher voltage battery, the battery can pump more charges onto the capacitor. So higher voltage, more charges, while the capacitance stays a constant. Because C equals to epsilon naught A over D, to make a large capacitor, we need to make the plates big and the plate separation small. And because epsilon naught is such a small number, Capacitance is usually a small number. For example, this disc-shaped ceramic capacitor is 0.01 microfarad. To make bigger capacitors, we need a bigger area and we need to push the plates very close together. So we usually use very thin layers of uh, conductor with very thin layers of uh, insulator in between and then roll them up so that they don't take up too much space. That's why larger capacitors are usually cylindrical in shape. This blue cylinder here is 130 microfarad. This big cylinder is 0.095 farad. You can see that it contains the layers rolled up. Just like this. This one here is a variable capacitor. I can turn the knob to adjust the overlapping area of the plates, changing the effective area of the capacitor and therefore changing the capacitance. A capacitor not only stores charges, it also stores energy. 
kind of like what happens when a water pump pumps water up high. Water gains potential energy. When the charges get pumped onto these plates, we get potential energy stored in the capacitor. Since u equals to q v, delta u would equal to q times delta v. So this is like height times the base. That means this will be the area of a charge versus voltage graph. For a capacitor, Q equals to C V. For a certain capacitor, the C would be a constant. That means the charge Q is proportional to the voltage. Therefore, this graph would be a straight line linear equation, like this. Therefore, the area of this Q versus V graph would be the area of a triangle. The area of a triangle is one half height times the base. The height of this triangle would be the charge that's on the plate in the end. The base of the triangle would be the voltage V at the end. So we get our equation. The potential energy stored in a capacitor is one half Q times V. Of course, before this, we always saw u equals to q v. That's the definition for the voltage. But now you have a one half q times v. This one half q v is only for the energy stored in a capacitor. The reason why we have the one half is because that's from the area of a triangle. But all other places, we would use u equals to q v. Because when a capacitor carries a charge, there is also an electric field between the plates. So we can also view this stored energy as energy stored in this electric field. For example, a beam of light is oscillating in traveling electric and magnetic field. And a beam of light carries energy because the field contains energy.